Hey everyone, today I've got my Zack Snyder's Justice League movie review. Ah! I am so excited to talk about this, you guys. Fans can rejoice after many tireless efforts to bring Zack Snyder's true vision of Justice League to the big screen. Or on HBO Max! I mean, whichever way you want to see it, it finally paid off. So is it still worth the hype? So as far as the story goes, this all started with what was called the Snyder Cut movement and a lot of people were thinking at the time there is no possible way that there was a version of the movie that, you know, actually existed than what we saw with the theatrical cut. And honestly, I was totally for whatever version was going to be much better than what we saw because at this point, after so many years later, I kind of regret seeing the Justice League movie and, you know, what Joss Whedon did, I was just a little bit disappointed because I've been a huge DC fan, you know, pretty much all my life and to see these characters be treated the way they were, I definitely thought justice, no pun intended, needed to be done with them. I was just wanting to see a much better version. What Zack Snyder did with this movie, it is formatted in a 4.3 aspect ratio and that is something that I haven't really gotten used to yet, but when I saw it, I actually didn't notice it half the time. I mean, I would definitely love to see this movie in IMAX and see it the way that it was intended to be seen and the unique thing about this movie was that, you know, having this movie not just be a straight through watch movie, but it is separated by these chapters. So basically, when you're watching it on the HBO Max streaming service, you could literally stop it whenever you want and then go back to it, you know, wherever the chapter is that you left off at. And so I, I really that idea because I feel like that's never been done before so it was really cool and it actually did not bother me when it was that way you know at the end of the day I feel like this is the team-up movie that we needed out of the DCEU and from the very beginning I knew that this is how it was meant to be and you know I'm actually going to be doing a separate video for spoilers, so there's literally nothing here that I'm going to talk about that's going to spoil it if you haven't seen this movie already. So in this movie, you can tell right off the bat that the tone is completely different. It is dark and it puts you on this emotional roller coaster and it suits with the consistency with the rest of Zack Snyder's other DC movies that came out since Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. And he definitely put his blood, sweat, and tears into this passion project. And it was all for the reason that, you know, when he originally made this movie in 2017 and he had to step away due to a family tragedy and you could really tell that he cares so much about these characters and because of that you see loads of violence and yes it is pretty uh bloody and gruesome at times in this movie but i absolutely loved it and scenes that flesh out the characters even further than what we saw just really made me appreciate them even more and you might end up needing tissue here and there because some of those lighthearted moments really tug at my heartstrings and also I definitely tried to pay close attention to the scenes that were in both versions of the movie sort of just for comparison purposes just to see which one did I like better and to see that there are slight different perspectives and those made a huge difference for example when you have Aquaman and Wonder Woman uh, having better line delivery, it definitely pays off as an end result. 
So, as far as the casting goes, I gotta start off talking about Ben Affleck as Batman and Bruce Wayne because he is not only my favorite character, but he is far more improved and I can actually take him seriously this time around when he is portraying the Cape Crusader. I always, you know, loved him and, you know, not have to hear him speaking any corny, you know, one-liner jokes like in Justice League and, oh, it just made me love his character and everything that he was doing so much better. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman was given even more scenes to really showcase her powers and just how strong she was and uh, the way she was interacting with the couple characters made me smile and I just also loved her Diana Prince character as well. Ray Fisher as Cyborg was truly the heart of the movie. I mean I can't stress it enough that you could tell compared to the 2017 Justice League movie, they did him dirty. I mean, I had been a supporter of him when he was claiming how he was being mistreated on the set of Justice League, but the way that they fleshed out his character here and they tell his backstory, that definitely made me want to cry. And not gonna lie, I was moved by his performance. Even Ezra Miller as The Flash, you know, may still have a weird looking running stance, but seeing those extra scenes with him that we never saw before showcased this perfect blend of his comical and serious side. And, you know, it's definitely worked well for the character of Barry Allen, which I thought made Ezra Miller a fantastic actor. Jason Momoa's Aquaman is still really cool. I mean, I love him so much. I love how when we first get introduced to seeing him, we see the interactions he has with other characters who weren't necessarily uh, given the spotlight in the other Justice League movie, but it was a perfect tie-in for his solo movie. Henry Cavill as Superman has the least amount of scenes in this movie still. When we saw him in the trailer wearing his black and silver logo suit, I was like, okay, that's pretty awesome. And thank God we did not have to deal with how he looked in the 2017 Justice League. So at least I was happy that his character was improved quite a bit. Kieran Hines as Steppenwolf, which is the villain of the movie, is not only improved as a villain as far as looks go. I mean, he looked very intimidating and downright terrifying. A far better design that I feel like Weta Digital definitely gets a lot of credit for. And he's actually believable with his actions that he does. And unlike what we got the first time around, I mean, what the hell was that thing? And of course, I have to bring this up, which I'll talk about more in my spoiler review, but Jared Leto's Joker was also awesome to see show up at some point during the movie which was in the Nightmare timeline, as we saw in the trailer. And it's impressive to see just how much of an impact he makes just by changing up his look than what we got to see in Suicide Squad. Now, I'm also going to be talking more about this character in my spoiler review, but Darkseid definitely gets a mention because when he shows up, as we know from the trailer, the last trailer we got, he was really cool to see, so oh, I just want to talk about him more, but I can't, so I'll wait. So the things that I liked about this movie was that the four hour runtime might turn some people off from wanting to see this movie since it is technically double the amount of time that we got in the 2017 Justice League movie, but have no fear because the way the movie flows, you are drawn into every detail of every scene that was fleshed out from the other version, and it is definitely a feast for the eyes as far as visuals go, and Zack Snyder certainly is no stranger to making things look just so appealing. We're barely paying attention to the runtime. I mean, I honestly watched this in one sitting without any breaks, <laughs> but I did pay attention to that Junkie XL score, and I already have a playlist made on Spotify, and it was, it sounded haunting, and beautiful and uplifting and a few times I was getting on my feet and jamming along with the music. 
and the action sequences are more intense than ever before and I definitely have my favorite scenes which include the one on the mascara with Steppenwolf as well as the third act that was you know they had the whole league get involved and the outcome is intense and jaw-dropping no more seeing a red sky baby yes so overall I just really love this movie I am probably gonna see it for a third time now Definitely can't wait to do that. So I would highly recommend seeing this movie if you guys haven't or if you saw the 2017 Justice League movie, you should definitely see this. It is not one to miss. So I would give this five hearts on the heart rate scale. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought of Zack Snyder's Justice League. And as always, you guys can subscribe to my channel. I've got more movie reviews, movie updates. Come back every week for a Child Thursday video. You guys can also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you guys later.